Okay. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, a while ago, I created the dashboard using uh, Laravel View and Pusher, and I'd like to give you a behind-the-scenes uh, look about it in this talk. Uh, I'm Freek van der Heerte. I'm a partner and a developer at a small Belgian company called Spasi. Uh, my handle on, on uh, Twitter is Freek Merze. I'm pretty sure that all of you are active on Twitter as well. And I've got my uh, blog, merze.de, where I talk about uh, modern PHP development and Laravel. Um, my company, Spasi, has been around since 2003. We're a development shop. We create websites, applications, and web shops. Our team is quite small. We only consist of uh, five people, four developers and one manager. And we focus on, on Laravel. So basically, everything we do uh, touches Laravel. Um, before I head off into the dashboard itself, I want to say a few things about our open source efforts for first. Um, we do a lot in the open source space. Uh, we release, um, um, re regularly we release new packages for Laravel, which are becoming quite popular. Uh, we currently have uh, 160 public repos on GitHub. Last year, they had a total download count of 800,000, and uh, this month we um, crossed the 5 million mark. And they are being downloaded now for 500,000 times uh, a month, which is yeah, quite amazing to us. And we find that uh, investing our time in open source uh, only has benefits. We learn a lot by just uh, doing things in the open. We uh, are forced to write quality documentation because without good documentation, nobody will uh, use our stuff. We also are forced to write tests because without this, nobody trusts our, our stuff. Um, if you take a look at the source code of our packages, um, then you'll see that we really know our way around PHP and Laravel. And of course, we use those packages in our own uh, projects as well. A um, little bit of a humble brag. Um, we're only a company of five people. And we still managed to get on the top three of on the list of top PHP uh, GitHub developers worldwide. This is a site that just uh, sums up all the uh, stars that the uh, GitHub organization have. And yeah, we're just behind Symfony, and yeah, Laravel will never catch up with them. Um, those packages are not free. Uh, there is a special license on them called Postcardware. So if one of our packages makes it into your production environment you are required to send us a postcard. This is our address, so uh, please uh, please send them. Um, we already have a couple, but I'm a few million short, so. <laughs> um, this is our actual wall in the office where we, where we post those postcards. And if we turn a bit around in our office, then you see that yeah, our office is a little bit smaller than this one. Um, that at the end of uh, our office, there's a, there's a big TV. And on that TV, there's a dashboard. Let's step a little bit closer to see what's this being displayed there. Um, so this is our dashboard. Let's go over it. Uh, on the top left corner, we have a, a Twitter feed uh, with all tweets. Um, that are, that are mentioning our company name. They uh, appear there instantly. Um, next to it, we have a list of events that are important uh, to our company. So we have a, a Google Calendar, and using an API, we read that and we display it on our dashboard. Um, at our company, we're all big music lovers, so we always want to know what music is playing. So we use uh, Last.fm for uh, getting the track that is playing at our office, and we can show it there. Uh, who here doesn't know Last of Him? Okay, every okay. La, last okay. Last of Him is a service you can just install a little program on your uh, on your Mac or on your PC, and it will just monitor what um, your music program is is uh, playing, and it will upload that track to uh, to the service. That's how it works. 
Uh, this tile um, needs no explanation. That's just uh, the clock and the weather. And yeah, I took this screenshot on a really sunny day. Uh, you see that it's uh, half past 10 and it's still 27 degrees. It was burning hot that day. Um, yeah, we take pride in our open source work. So we display some uh, statistics about that on the dashboard too. These are the happy statistics. These are the sad statistics. The issues and the, and the pull request. I try to keep that pull request number to zero, but it's, it's really hard. Um, here uh, are a couple of tiles in the middle. And we have one for each of our team members. And this is what they should be working on uh, that week. It's just a little reminder what they should, uh, should be doing. Um, we also have uh, an uptime monitor package, which can uh, verify if, if sites are up. And we integrate that with our dashboard as well. So if any of our stuff is down, uh, our monitor will send a signal to the dashboard and the URL of the site that is down will be uh, displayed on the dashboard. So that's, uh, that's it. Let's see how this, uh, this works behind the scenes. Oh, forgot to mention, this dashboard is open source as well. In that GitHub repo, you'll find the code that's being actually deployed to our server that displays uh, our dashboard. So you can fork it and do yeah, anything you like uh, with it. If you make a dashboard with it from your office, post start, OK? Um, OK, high level overview. How does this work? Um, the dashboard is really just a single HTML page. And it's being displayed in a full screen browser, just a browser. It's not a special program. And once it uh, has been loaded, we're never going to reload it again because we want our dashboard to be as calm as possible. And we don't want to see a page building up the whole time. So um, we will update. Uh, the dashboard using using JavaScript using Vue, and each of its each of the tiles of the dashboard will listen for its own incoming events, and when something comes in, it will just update itself. That's uh, that's how it works. Um, this is uh, a small overview of uh, of how things work. So we have Laravel that's installed in the, on the server. It will uh, use API calls to fetch data from external services. It will make an HTTP request to a server, uh, to a service called Pusher. Um, and Pusher will, via WebSockets, send a signal to the browser that it should, uh, to, to, uh, to a tile that, that it should update itself. Um, now, who here uses Laravel? Just, uh, okay, a few hands. Who here uh, uses Pusher? Okay, not okay, not so many, but we'll, uh, we'll I'll give a demo of that too. And who uses Vue? Okay, two hands. So um, I'll I'm going to give a small crash course into Vue, but I'm going to make it um, very uh, very quick. So um, that's all the theory. I want to show it to you now how it uh, how it works in code. We're going to talk uh, a little bit how the grid, about the grid system, about how we can position things on the dashboard. Then I'm going to explain how the packages tile works. Packages, that is the tile that displays the statistics of our, uh, of our packages, the download statistics. And then we are going to uh, have a little bit of fun with uh, the Twitter tile. Um, so we're going to be live coding a little bit. We're going to use an internet connection. So let's hope that Algolia has a decent internet connection that is as fast as the, their search. Um, okay, let's do it. So let's open up PHP Storm first. And I guess that is a little bit small, even for me here. So. We're going to make that all a little bit bigger. Is that readable for most of you? For all of you, sorry. And let's open up the terminal as well. Cool. And you can see here, the ones that uh, know Laravel, that yeah, this is just the basic structure of a Laravel application. And in the resources directory, um, we basically have one view, a dashboard view. And this is the one page that we are displaying in the browser. 
uh, let me head over to the browser first. So I've got a local copy of the dashboard here running that basically contains uh, no data. Yeah, it's a little bit dark, so you can't see where the, the tiles are starting, but they have a little border around. Okay, um, let's see how the positioning works. Just to make things a little bit more easier to follow, I'm going to comment out almost all of it here, except our time and uh, our time and weather tile here. And you should think of our dashboard as an uh, Excel uh, grid. So the rows are numbered and the columns, they have letters. So A1 is in the top left corner. Let's prove that that uh, is indeed the case. So yeah, our clock is there because we put it in position A1. Um, if you want to make it a little bit wider, the grid system allows for ranges as well. So A1 colon B1, and now it should be too wide. So that's how it works. If you need more rows or columns, you can do that here. So let's make this two columns. And you can see that now it uses half of, of the screen. And if you really want to, and for a clock, it, it really makes no sense, then I'm gonna do it anyway. You can have two of the same components at the same time on the screen. So now I have two clocks, which is a little bit silly. But if you look a little bit uh, down here for those tasks of our team, we just use the same component and we give it another uh, parameter. So. Let's reset everything here so I have a proper dashboard to, uh, to work with. Cool. And let's um, dive into um, a small component just to give the people that don't know you very well a little bit of a feel of how uh, things work at that site. So you probably noticed that we don't use regular HTML tags here. We've seen that in uh, Julien's talk before too, um, because these are the view components. So view will replace this by something uh, by something else. So let's take a look at the time weather tile, how it works. If I go into my resources, assets, JavaScript directory, where by default all JavaScript in the Laravel application lives, I have a components directory. And for each tile, I have a view component here. Let's dive into that time weather uh, tile here. And view components or view files, uh, they contain multiple things. In the case of our dashboard, it contains a template, some HTML and some behavior in script tags. This is JavaScript. And what view will do, it will just replace this time weather thingy here by uh, the HTML in our template. That's how it works. Now, how do we update the tile? How does it come that we that these uh, seconds count here? Now, in the template, we can use some variables here. We, we have here simply date and time. Those variables are the state of that component. And whenever you change the state of the component, whenever those variables change value, then Vue will just re-render the whole component. That's how it works. So if I go to the created method here, which is basically like the constructor in PHP, this method will be executed when the component is, uh, is being created. Then it will um, call a function refresh time. What does that refresh time function do? It will just uh, use a popular JavaScript library to get the current uh, date and time. So it will update the state and therefore the, the component will re-render. And how do we up make it update every second? Yeah, we just will call that function every second. Just by changing the state every second, the, um, the HTML will re-render every second. And that's basically how Vue works. Is everybody on the same page here? All right, cool. Let's do uh, something more interesting. Let's take a look at the packages tile. So that's the tile here that displays uh, the amount of package downloads. Um, yeah, you can see there's no data here. 
let's take a look at how that works. So for that to work, there's some uh, server-side logic as well to fetch the data. So if I go into my app directory, and in the console directory, I also have a components directory. And here, all code lives to fetch the data for the components. So each component that needs data has its own uh, directory. Let's go to the packages uh, component here. People that uh, know Laravel, they immediately see, ha, ah, this uh, class, it extends command. And command, that is um, something you can execute on the command line. It's just um, some, some logic that you can uh, execute as a whole. And another property that commands have is that you can schedule them. Laravel has a built-in scheduler for those commands. So here you can see that the signature of this command is uh, dashboard fetch packages total. If I go into the console kernel, which is something default that Laravel has, um, it's also a class which has a schedule function. And you can see here that we can schedule commands. That fetch package totals command, we just schedule it hourly. So hourly, we are going to perform that command. Let's see what that command actually does. Um, so this is a lot of uh, mumbo jumbo to uh, uh, fetch the data from packages, which is the service where uh, all PHP packages are downloaded from and they have statistics. And what uh, this whole piece of code does, it will just return an array with the daily uh, downloads for, the, for our packages, the monthly uh, uh, sum and the, and the total sum. Um, so it's basically an array with three keys. Um, so now that we have this data, how do we get it to, uh, to the client? We're going to send out an event. Laravel has an event broadcasting system built in. I'm just using the, the things that Laravel provides me here. And how do, does that work? You just basically call an event function and you give it an event with, uh, with the data that you want to send. So if I go into that totals fetched event here, what, what is this class? So it's totals fetched, it extends dashboard events. We're going to dive in that soon. And you can see here that we get the totals. And what do we do with the totals? Something very strange. We're just going to, um, yeah, for everything in that totals array, we're going to make a public property here, property daily monthly total. Why on, why on earth do we do that? Uh, because how Laravel works, how this um, broadcasting system works, is that when this event um, will be fired, Laravel will use the public properties on an event class as the data that it should send. So that's why we put it in uh, public properties. If we go a little bit deeper, we go into that dashboard event here, then we can see here that this is a uh, class that implements uh, an interface, should broadcast. And that is the way of letting Laravel know, hey, you should broadcast this to Pusher. That's, uh, that's the only thing you need to do. And Pusher works a little bit like a radio. It has different channels where you can broadcast things up on. But for this project, we only have one channel called the dashboard. So everything goes uh, in one thing. Cool. Um, let's see that piece of the, of the puzzle first. So I'm going to execute command. And um, I've got here the pusher. I'm going to clear this out. I've got here a debug console by, uh, from pusher uh, opened up. And here every event that goes to pusher will be displayed. So let's execute that command. So it was PHP artisan, artisan is Laravel's task runner, dashboard, fetch packages totals. Let's hope the internet works. Okay, it's very fast. And you can see here that we got an event here with that daily, monthly, and total thing. And if I look at the dashboard, you can see that those numbers are here as well. Okay, let's take a look at the next step in the puzzle. How does the data uh, end up here? Um, I'm going back to my JavaScript. 
So here for every uh, tile, I have a component. Let's take a look at that packages component. So it also has a template and it also has some scripts. If I go uh, into the methods that this component has, it has here a thing called get event handlers. And it returns an object in which each um, uh, property uh, is the name of the event, totals fetched, which correspondence, uh, correspondence with, um, let me go to the right one, to that totals fetched class name here. So Laravel will use those class names as event names. Um, this one. And when, whenever we hear that event, we are going to execute a function that gets the response that we get from, uh, from Pusher. And we are going to get that uh, daily, monthly, and total number off of it. And we are going to put it in the internal state of this component. And remember what I've said, whenever we update the internal state of the component, the component will be rendered. So that's, uh, that's how that, that works. Um, cool. Let's dive a little bit deeper in this. That get event handlers thing. How does uh, how does that work behind the scenes? Now our component has also a special key here called mixins, and a mixin is a little bit like a trait in PHP. A mixin is a is a is a sort of file where you store some functions that you want to apply on multiple components, just like a trait. Uh, is a place where you can define some functions that you want to apply on uh, multiple classes. And we have an echo trait here. Um, can't I go inside this one? Ah, oh, no, it's, it's here. Mixins echo. Okay, so echo, or by its full name, Laravel echo, is a JavaScript framework that is provided by Taylor Otwell, the creator of, uh, of Laravel itself, to make it easy to work with, um, with services like Pusher in, um, in JavaScript. So what you can do here, if you have Echo installed, is you can listen on a, on a private channel called Dashboard in this case. And here you can listen to those events and bind a function that should be called whenever we hear that event to it. So, this mixin will add a created method to our um, uh, to our component. So this will get executed whenever our component is mounted. We are going to call that get event handlers function. That's this one with the name of the uh, of the event and and the function. What should be done whenever that uh, event is uh, is catched. And here we are just going to bind that. So we are going to use that event name and we're going to say, hey, we are going to execute that function whenever we hear that, uh, that event. So that's, that's how that works. Now, I get that if you um, are not that familiar with Vue, this is all a little bit confusing. But if you um, take uh, some time to, to delve a little bit into the documentation of Laravel Echo, you'll see that this is a very common use case uh, uh, that you can do with it. And it's with a little bit of research, it's easily, uh, easily set up. Okay, let's take a look at one more component before we, uh, before we stop the technical demo. So the Twitter thing, how does that work? So if I go into App Console, I also have here uh, some commands for Twitter. And I got here a listen for mentions command. So Twitter has, Twitter provides um, real time streams. And whenever um, something happens on Twitter, Twitter can notify you instantly. So what we are going to do is we are going to use uh, such a stream, the public stream that calls, uh, Twitter calls that a public stream. And whenever we hear something, we are going to uh, send out that event again, so we have it instantly on our uh, on our dashboard as well. So, sorry, yeah, yeah. The stream is a free service. That's a that's a public API 
uh, that's provided by Twitter. Yeah. And this, uh, this package here, Twitter Streaming API, is something I made myself to just get this really nice syntax. Uh, if you want to use it, it's just uh, uh, Composer install, and you can just do this without any other, uh, other knowledge. Um, okay, so by default, we are going to listen for uh, Spassi. Uh, yeah, but let's have a little bit of fun and yeah, just listen to uh, to Algolia for uh, for a second. And now it's really the time to uh, get your phones up and just tweet something to Algolia. I'll put in Laravel PHP here as well for if you want to do Laravel PHP. And then I'm going to start up that stream with this command. Listen, Twitter mentions. Things be artisan. Listen, Twitter mentions. Now we're connected to that real-time API. And if somebody now tweets something to that account, it should be here. Yeah. Thank you, Nathaniel. So it's it's very fast. So the ones that are posting, uh, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> very good question. Um, the ones that, that are posting, um, tweets now they'll see that it appears earlier on our dashboard than then their app confirms that the that the tweet has been sent out so it's really 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 fast so that's uh that's how that works cool um let's uh head back to the to the presentation there's one more thing that i like to show you how are we displaying this on our TV screen. And it's uh, really very easy. Behind our TV screen, there lives a small creature, a Raspberry Pi. That Raspberry Pi is a uh, Raspberry Pi 2, um, very low cost, uh, small computer. And it's powered by the USB part of our TV, so you don't need an external power connection uh, for that. So that's, that's really nice. It uses Raspbian Jesse, which is the default operating system on a Raspberry Pi. And when it boots up, it will just um, open up Chrome in full screen mode and um, display uh, our dashboard. And as a matter of fact, I've got a clone of our Raspberry Pi here. And I yeah, just want to give you a feel of it. And we're just going to let it start up here. So it uh, uses the internet connection from my Mac. It will use also the power of my Mac. Let's try this. Boom. And let's give it some power and see what this beast does. Uh, USB. OK. Let's hope it works. OK, so now it's, uh, it's, it's booting up. So this is uh, the boring part. And in a few seconds, it will boot up into its uh, uh, user interface. I hope. <laughs> we'll see. Black screen, come on. And you'll see a little terminal window now where I'm booting up Chrome. And it will Chrome, it, it will boot up, Chrome will start up for the first time, then you have that restore thing there. I don't know how to uh, do, uh, to hide that. So I quit Chrome again and I started up again and then it's gone. <laughs> that's some real programming. Oh, and it didn't work this time. That's that's too bad for this presentation. But yeah, you can see that, that uh, yeah, we, uh, we started up. And this is our actual dashboard. So you can see some, somebody uh, um, mentioned our company, so that tweeted on there. So that's, uh, that's how it works. So sorry for that little restore thing. <laughs> Okay, let's back. Let's we back. have time for a few questions. Oh, I get two more slides. Oh, and then, then we're gone. <laughs> then we're gone. So I want to mention it again that you can uh, try this out yourself because yeah, we've open sourced uh, the entire uh, dashboard. I've also uh, written an extensive blog post on it on my blog where I um, do the same explanation as I did uh, during this talk, but I explain a few other components as well. Um, so, yeah, this is the second and last slide. Uh, I've uploaded my slides to Speaker Deck. You can uh, find them there. Um, yeah, if you use Laravel, take a look at our open source pages. Uh, that's, uh, that's the second link. Probably we've made a package that could be of use to you in a project. 
And yeah, if you're into PHP and Laravel, uh, go check out my blog. I try to uh, write about cool things. And if you don't like checking out my blog, I can come to your mailbox as well if you uh, subscribe to the newsletter. So that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Um, why, why using a pusher, even though I guess it has its own services, uh, yeah. when, when Laravel has its own web sockets already? You can have web sockets in, in Laravel. Um, when I was creating this dashboard, there really wasn't a good good way to do it on a server itself. But um, yeah, as time went by, people have investigated a little bit more, and somebody created a little node server that just mimics the whole of Pusher. And in my full presentation, I give a demo of that as well, and I switch out Pusher and we do it locally. Uh, if you want to see that, I can demo it to you after uh, after this talk as well. But uh, that Laravel Echo thing that I've said, it's completely uh, driver-based. You can swap it out for other things if you don't like Pusher. OK, just one small question. Why do you use um, typing as comments when we have actual uh, safe typing in PHP now? I saw uh, at uh, uh, int before uh, at response time. Where was that? Uh, in, in, in an attribute of, of some class, there was uh, some comments at mm -hmm. int to say to integer, but you can use actual typing in PHP now. But not for the properties. For properties, uh, you don't have type hinting for that. That are that must be dog box. You only have the type hinting in a function signature and in return type hints. OK, it's only in methods then? It's only on methods, not on properties. On okay, properties, yeah. there was a proposal for it, but it was rejected, I think. I don't know why. OK, I missed it. <laughs> More questions? OK, then we're done. Oh, sorry. Yeah. We have a few dashboards in the office, and we are using dashing. It was a Shopify yeah. uh, dashboard thing based in Ruby, and I'm a Ruby guy, so yeah. sorry. We, um, we use dashing before, too, and it's also an excellent dashboard. Yeah, it's, but it's kind but of okay. it isn't maintained anymore. Yes, right. <laughs> it turns out we burn two TVs, because having them turned on for uh -huh. the whole day, for a whole year, uh -huh. uh, is not something they have been designed for. Yeah. What kind of TV do you use? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had uh, the same thoughts when we put over the dashboard, and we just uh, you know, let's just make the best of it. We'll see what happens. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they will burn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a Samsung, but we'll see. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I have a question. I think I, I'm not a dev person, so sorry if my question sounds dumb. But as a business person. Um, it feels like a great idea when you also have teams on multiple sites yeah. and when you need to deal with them on different time zones and maybe have uh, sharing different uh, desks and the job boards, uh, mm -hmm. not job boards, but work boards. Yeah. So is there a way to add that kind of information and customize to different time zones and all kind of things? Yeah, basically you would uh, adapt the dashboard a little bit that there are um, yeah, different configurations uh, built in. I think it will be basically pretty easy it, uh, you will have uh, some multiple views uh, then yeah if you want to know some technical specifics I can do it after the talk but okay. I think it should be pretty easy to do so okay. Thank yeah. You. yeah yeah um, you talked about the, um, the dead of the TV yeah. um, I think I've read in your issue Mm -hmm. Something with packages when you killed uh, their API with uh, all the dashboard yeah. in the world. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I would like to hear that story and why, uh, why uh, it was um, a problem and why because of your dashboard packages. Yeah, now. there was somebody that uh, forked our dashboard uh, and then um, tried to get a package count for their stuff as well, but they made an error. And uh, Laravel was thinking the whole time, um, I should try this again. And it did that in an endless loop. And so um, I think, yeah, Georgie contacted me from, hey, your dashboard is making like 
millions of calls and it's really hurting our performance a little bit. But it wasn't us, it was somebody that forked our dashboard. But luckily that person uh, also was subscribed to our issue tracker on GitHub and he responded to that and he said, yeah, it's me, sorry, <laughs> I won't do it again. <laughs> so I said, I think if you go to the dashboard repo and you uh, yeah, search for Jordi, who is the creator of Composer, you can see the, the whole story. <laughs> it was all. Okay, thank you.